NHS Scotland had been discussing uh, what they call a two-tier system that could lead to the wealthy having to pay for medical treatment. That coming from uh, meetings of, uh, or minutes rather, of a meeting with health officials uh, with the NHS Scotland boss Caroline Lamb discussing reforms which could also mean uh, the funding of new drugs uh, being paused and targets for sending patients home from hospital after just 23 hours. We're joining us now from Westminster, the Liberal Democrat MP Christine Jardine, who represents Edinburgh West. Christine, thank you for your uh, time this afternoon. Um, this is pretty alarming, but we're just trying to work out, you know, is this the NHS just flag-waving to see what the reaction is, or could this be really a plan to fill this £1 billion hole they've got there? Well, it is a very, very worrying um, development. Our, our health service in Scotland is being overwhelmed. Um, it, and what we have seen in this leaked document is a damning verdict and a damning sort of insight into how badly it's being managed by the NHS. When you get to the, by, sorry, by the SNP Green Administration at Holyrood, and when you get to the point where people who are dedicated and who have dedicated their lives, their careers to public service to the NHS and the principle of free care at the point of delivery. When you get them discussing documents of this nature because they feel forced to that point, then you see how bad the situation is in Scotland. It's not just that they're worried about budgets and not being able to meet demand. It's that they feel the Scottish government has um, tacitly approved to the, the discussion of it. And that's why it's so worrying. The fact that there is this feeling that this is perhaps what is wanted in Scotland and uh, by the NHS government and that they have allowed the management to, um, to get into such a state of disrepair. Yeah, I mean, that, that's the question. You know, a billion pounds is, is a lot to suddenly lose down the plug hole. Is it the fact that, you know, the NHS management have actually had to spend it because of various problems north of the border? Or is it that the Barnet for, uh, formula has meant that this money has gone to the Scottish government, the devolved government, and it's disappeared somewhere? Well, that's what we have to find out. We do have a problem with the Scottish government with them saying what a rosy picture they have created in Scotland and their MPs down here giving everyone this false picture of what is happening in Scotland. And so often they have promised that they're spending more on the NHS, but also we have long waiting times, we have ambulances, uh, same problems in Scotland, we have ambulances which don't turn up for 19, 20 hours. Um, I know from my own constituents that this happens. I I, own from my, I know from my own personal experience yeah. of having been injured and waiting for an ambulance. And this, the problem is entirely with the Scottish government. It's not to do with um, the Barnet formula itself. It's to do, how they, to do with how they are spending the money in Scotland. The fact that they're willing to put something like £20 million into an independence referendum that the majority of people don't want, rather than make sure that the NHS in Scotland has the money to work effectively and that the staff in the NHS Scotland have the support that they need. Hamza Yusuf is looking increasingly lonely and embarrassed as a Scottish government minister. And it's, you know, they are going to have to recognise that people are worried about this and do something. 